A true RMS multimeter gives you an accurate representation of what the amount of energy in your AC waveform is. It actually takes measurements throughout this and calculates the total of energy where an RMS meter just looks at the peak to peak level and averages out what it believes the energy is. And when you have a perfect sine wave uh, like this is, an RMS meter and a true RMS meter show the same voltage. Here I have a MM6000 true RMS meter and MM1300 RMS meter. They're measuring essentially the same voltage within a tenth of a volt. Sometimes they're measuring the same voltage. So right now, because it's a pure sine wave, these two meters show the same voltage. I'm using a battery backup system. I'm going to kill the power to this battery backup. This guy is going to then generate an AC waveform. However, it's not going to be a clean, perfect sine wave like you see there. When I kill the power, this is putting out more of a square wave. There's actually more energy in a square wave. But the RMS meter is looking at the peak to peak of this and averaging out saying, hey, I only see 90 volts. The true RMS meter is looking at the total amount of energy and saying, hey, I'm seeing 121 volts. Everything's working great. My AC equipment is going to work properly. The problem is if you're an electrician and you're testing a battery backup system, most of those systems are going to be much more expensive and, and uh, more reliable than what this guy is. And some of them can put out a pure, perfect sine wave. So if you were to see 90 volts coming out of your multimeter, do you know if this guy is putting out a pure sine wave? Is he putting out a square wave? He could be putting out a pure sine wave that's only 90 volts and not working properly. So having a true RMS meter really lets you know what's happening with your line, gives you a more accurate reading where the RMS meter is good basically when you have a pure sine wave.